So in this video, we're going to be looking at consecutive integer problems. So the term consecutive means back to back, like consecutive years served on school board council. So with consecutive integers, I'm looking for integers that are back to back. Now there's going to be some stipulations. So the first type of problem is just going to be normal consecutive integers. And so those I've all done in this reddish um, pinkish color. So consecutive integers would be the numbers one, two, three, because they are back to back on the number line. And so if I have the example, so don't look over here first. If I have the examples, one, two, and three are all right next to each other on the number line. So those are consecutive integers. Now I want to be able to write this in general. So in general, I could say that the first number is X. And then the second number, like 2, is 1 away from x. And so I can write that as x plus 1 because it's always going to be one spot over on the number line. The third number is going to be two spots over from x. And so looking at my number line, I've got 1, 2, gets me to 3. And so in general, I've got this x, x plus 1, and x plus 2 for my consecutive integers. For consecutive even and odd integers, those are going to actually be exactly the same, but let's look at why. So consecutive even integers, examples would be 4, 6, and 8, because those are the even numbers right next to each other. Yes, they're not exactly next to each other on the number line, but remember, I'm only looking at even numbers. And if I was only looking at even numbers, then those would be right beside each other. And so an example would be 4, 6, 8. Now, to write that in general in terms of x's, the first one's going to be 4. And then 6 is 2, sorry, 6 is 2 spots away from 4 on the number line. So I've got x plus 2. And then 8 is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4 spots away from 4 on the number line. And the same thing is going to be true with my consecutive odd integers. The numbers I gave you were 3, 5, and 7 because those are the odd numbers right beside each other. If I was only looking at odd numbers, those are consecutive. Those are back to back. However, when I'm writing in general with my X's, first one's always going to be X or whatever variable they tell you. And then five is two spots away from three. And then seven is four spots away from three. And so here is my uh, general formula. So let's look at what that looks like when I actually apply it to some of these problems. So the first one just says, find three consecutive integers whose sum is negative 60. Well, they told me three consecutive integers. And so because of that, I'm going to use these formulas from the consecutive integer row. x, x plus 1, and x plus 2 because they told me consecutive integers. So that means I'm going right there. And then they told me who's sum. So that means they're going to add up to be negative 60. Well, now it's just a matter of solving. So I've got x plus x plus 1 plus x plus 2. Combine up like terms. x plus x plus x is going to be 3x. And then 1 plus 2 is going to be 3 equals negative 60. I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides. Those will cancel and give me 3x equals negative 63. And then I'm going to divide by 3 and get x equals negative 21. Okay, well that's only my first one. They want all three consecutive integers. So x is negative 21, which means x plus 1 is going to be negative 21 
plus 1, which is going to give me negative 20. And x plus 2 is going to be negative 21 plus 2, or negative 19. And so those would be my three consecutive integers. Okay, the next one says the sum of two consecutive odd integers is negative 120. Now I'm looking at this second row. Now I'm looking at, or sorry, third row, consecutive odd integers. Well, because they asked me for only two consecutive odd integers, I'm just going to use these first two. And so because it said two consecutive odd integers, I'm going to use those two, x and x plus 2. And it says that the sum of those two numbers, so I'm going to add, is negative 120. So again, I'm going to go to combine like terms. x plus x is going to give me 2x plus 2 equals negative 120. I'm going to then subtract 2 from both sides. And then I will finish this thing out by solving 4x. And so I'll have 122 divided by, two, sorry, negative 122 divided by 2 on both sides is going to give me x equals negative 61. Again, that's just my first one. So if x equals negative 61, oops. Then x plus 2, negative 61 plus 2 is going to give me negative 59. And so those will be your two consecutive odd integers. And just to check, this is odd integers and these are odd numbers. So I am good. And they are consecutive. They are back to back. All right, this last one is probably the most complicated just because it's got a lot of words that we are translating. The first part says find three consecutive even integers. Find three consecutive even integers such that the sum of twice the first and three times the second is 64 more than the third. All right, well, the first thing I need is that I'm dealing with consecutive even integers, and I've got three of them. One, two, three. And so the consecutive even integers are going to be right here in this row. I'm going to go ahead and jot those down. That the first is x, Second is x plus 2, and the third is x plus 4. So that just kind of helps me sort through when it says first, second, and third. That's what I'm using, x, x plus 2, and x plus 4. And so now I've got that the sum of twice the first. So let's just look at that part, the sum of twice the first. Well, sum means that I'm going to add them. And I'm going to add twice the first to x, right? Because twice is two times. And the first is x. So I've got two times x plus three times the second. Three times the second. So three but the second is x plus 2. So I need that thing in parentheses. Okay, so let's just recap. The sum of, so I added those two, twice the first, 2x, and three times the second. So three times x plus 2. I do need those parentheses because it's three times that whole thing, x plus 2 not just 3 times x. So if I didn't have the parentheses, it would just be 3x plus 2. So that's why I do need those parentheses. And then it says, is, 
is, which is my equal sign, is 64 more than twice the third. All right. 64 more than is going to be addition. Twice, we just saw that, is going to be 2 times the third, which is x plus 4. Now that I've got that thing set up, it's just a matter of simplifying. And so what I'm going to do is go through... Oops. Go through and distribute these. So let's distribute. Three times X is going to give me three X. Three times two is going to give me six. Carry down that two X. Carry down the 64. Same thing. Two times X. Two X and two times four. 8. Go through and combine up some like terms. I've got like terms on the left. Um, 2x plus 3x is going to give me 5x. And then I've got 64 and 8 is going to give me 72 plus 2x. All right, now I've got a variable on both sides, and so I'm going to subtract the 2x from both sides, which is going to give me 3x on the left plus 6 equals 72 because those will cancel. And then I'm going to subtract 6 from both sides. And get 3x equals 66. Divide by 3. Divide by 3. And get x equals 22. Alright, so there's my first one. And so let's go back and kind of see what was happening. So I found x. Which x is the first and it's the first of three consecutive integers. So, the first is 22. And so, the second is going to be 22 plus 2, which is going to give me 24. And then the third is going to be 22 plus 2. 4, which is going to give me 26. And so my three consecutive integers are going to be 22, 24, and 26.